Cut to Chase Podcast. We're back with another episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. Always appreciate it, you guys. And again, tune in as much as you can. If you do like the podcast, go ahead and share it. Uh, throw, a, so, throw a subscription up on YouTube. Um, you know, anything that you feel that will move this um, podcast forward, please go ahead and do it. I give you permission. You know, I give you my verbal permission, but we're, we're back again with another episode. Um, so it's mid August, uh, starting to get a little bit of, I guess, kind of a premature fall weather here in Boston last week. It was like in the sixties, it's starting to get a little cold. This is when I feel like I start becoming sensitive. Now I start, as soon as it drops below seven degrees, I start becoming this, you know, overly aggressive person towards nature. <laughs> just you know as soon as it goes below a threshold that i don't i don't accept i start just hating everything <laughs> you know I, I, i'm gonna be honest with you i thought about this last week i said in in a weird way am i experiencing a midlife crisis i don't know but sometimes i do get irritable very quickly where I want to respectively kill somebody. <laughs> like sometimes I just really like when someone's not listening, like to like something I'm saying, that's like with common sense. I just think of like, I could probably serve federal penitentiary time for what I want to do to you right now, but I can't because there's laws I have to abide by. But sometimes somebody just needs a really good smack. I'm sorry. I'm not a violent person, which is crazy because I'm Instagram. I put MMA practitioner in jujitsu, which is probably would lead to you to believe otherwise, but I'm not a violent person. <laughs> I, um, wow, that was an interesting way to start the podcast. A little negative of some physical altercation. It's not, you're not going to get no subscriptions like that, Chase. Let's get a little more positivity on this podcast here. Um, Today's my day off from work, which is good. I went to bed, no lie, yesterday at five o'clock in the evening. I didn't wake up until seven this morning. Now, there's a couple things that I'm thinking thinking of right now. One, some of you are probably thinking, wow, he got some really good rest, and that's why he came in hot on the podcast. Or two, something's going on with him. He's probably sick. He needs to go get checked. Because there's no reason why someone should be going to bed at five o'clock in the evening and waking up in, you know, early morning the next day. That is five, two, seven, another five. That's five and two is seven. Seven plus five is 12. Another two is 12. That's 12 hours of sleep. Can, who sleeps 12 hours straight? I don't think I know anyone in the world that can sleep 12 hours straight. Except a vampire. <laughs> like, like, honestly. Um, but I feel good. I do. I did accept. I did accept it though. You know, I feel like, I feel like you have to allow your body to rest. And I'm really a big rester. <laughs> Sometimes too much. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta get some rest. You gotta pay attention to your body. If you're, if you're overworking yourself, if you feel like if your body says you need to sleep, go ahead and sleep guys. Stop pushing yourself to to, you know, just to stop pushing yourself too hard. If you need to crank out a good nap, crank out a good nap. I say crank out a nap anywhere, at any time. Take a nap at work. I did. It led me to some unemployment benefits. Yep. It definitely led me to unemployment. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like, you, you know, if you need your body to rest, you need to, you need to rest. Um, so, well... Speaking of unemployment, uh, let's bring Nikki Neighborhoods into the building. Uh, <laughs> wow, what an intro! I didn't I, the first time in my life <laughs> I've I've ever been <laughs> introed into anything with. Well, with such a if we were talking about unemployment, let's bring on our next person here. <laughs> so Nikki Neighborhoods. First of all, I came into the I came into the studio. WF, thank you again for having us at WFN Studios. We're I, here, the studio. Nikki neighborhoods, everybody. 
Uh, we're in the studio. Uh, I see things are starting to. You starting to add some 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 aura to uh-huh. the studio. I see a lamp, uh huh, which is good. I see a couple couple posters framed. By the way, uh huh. I feel like you know what? I feel like when people, the type of people who frame their 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 posters, like they got some, they got a certain confidence in them. You know, a certain aura about them. Mm-hmm. You know, especially the people who like frame the little little posters, like eight by ten oh, cards. I love that. Yeah. I, That's class. People who frame eight by ten, those small pictures. In my at, at first, I was like, "You're a fucking asshole." Mm-hmm. You um, are that for who, sure. I think you are. If you are, if you frame everything, I think there's a part of you that's a you're just your dick. It gets a little creepy. Go to someone's house. They got about fifty five frames hanging on the wall. You're like, "Why don't maybe get a tack?" Can't do a tack in a living room, though. I'm sorry. What am I saying? <laughs> I just you know, it just it. it I think about it. I'm like, why are they paying attention to this? Are they this specific in details? You know, I, connect, I think you need I to connect it to them. At, I connect people who frame small pictures to just, you know, private investigators, you know, uh-huh. crime watch people, people who can solve a mystery. Ex detectives. Ex detectives. Uh-huh. There's a certain level of psychopath to them. <laughs> yeah, I think. <laughs> Cause, dude, if you what's the first thing you come into a house and there's like the first, you know, those those foyers that people have of like people of pictures that they have, then just everything's framed from mm. their from their great great grandfather all the way to their fucking you know goldfish. That I don't mind. You know, I take back what I said. I'm taking the opposite stance on this. You got to frame things. You got to frame things, but you don't need a million things on the wall. That's all I'm saying. That's fucking creepy. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. But the ones that you have actually are good sizes. They look about eight by. Probably like no, those are, those are good. Oh, this is about twenty four by tens right there. The reason why I said that number is because sometimes in my head I always felt like deep down in my heart I could have owned a frame store. Those are definitely bigger than twenty four by tens. All right, well, whose podcast is this? Those were those were like forty eight by <laughs> by fifteens. I don't think you've ever heard my. I don't think you ever heard my podcast previously or how I talk. I'm not. I don't. Oh, I've done my research. Okay, <laughs> Clado. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've done my, I've done my research, and I've listened to a couple episodes of our podcast. Right, right. Numbers and um, and facts don't really go in, in my brain. You're more of a feelings kind of guy. Thank you. That's a. But I do think you should be more spe- that de- specific. That, that deserves. Let the clap first before you shit on me. Thank you. Listen, the frames. So we're getting the studio together. Um, Good. Yeah, and it'll be nice to be nice to, to have be able to sit instead of right. these fucking wicker chairs. Right. Um, for a second, I thought you said wicker chairs, but, <sighs> but it was from my comments earlier. I mean, it was right. It was kind of in the same. Yeah, you've been yeah, <laughs> you've been very, you've been very black lately. <laughs> we're, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna dive deep into some things at a later time. But you've been you've been you've been on some you know some black shit lately, and, I'm, and I like it. You know, I, I, you got your today. You met me with sandals and socks. You know, you know that's a black three people. quarter length socks. Three quarter two black three quarter length socks. He was wearing socks with sandals. Nike socks with Adidas sandals. Only black shit. That's black. That's shit. how you know I'm not in a good place <laughs> <laughs> or in a comfortable place with yeah. your feet. No, no. Like yeah, I was on some. I was like, yo, I was like, yo, Nick is coming out on some, on some vibes right here. Mm-hmm. You also look like you were in a, a like a recruiter for like a Division One basketball team. Oh, you ever seen those guys that come oh, in yeah. and they're just coming with such a confidence and an arrogance to them, but as also if, like a sliminess. Like they, I don't think they played at that school. You know. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know, like they didn't play. They didn't play at Union. You know they didn't, they didn't play at like Williams, but this is this is a stepping stone for them to get to Kentucky, right? That they think they're going to get to. Yeah, and they and always you, have to. They it, it, they they kind of felt like they were a bridge to like the head coach. D D one basketball, like low level D one basketball, high level D two basketball scouts. They're always and they're always like. Getting like getting the numbers of the of the cheerlead like of, of the of the faculty of the opposing school like there's I've seen some the <laughs> grimiest I'm sorry but the grimiest people in the world um, 
and this is not all people that play college basketball are grimy, but the grimiest people in the world have all played college basketball at one point. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Or Everyone that plays college basketball is not grimy. That's not what I'm saying. Right. But the grimiest people in the world have all played college basketball. Mm. I've, I've met some I've met some very grimy, grimy motherfuckers playing D- Division Three, And it's actually opposite. Right. You would think at Division One it would be like the highest level of grimy. Right. It's the opposite. Division Three. Yeah. And then it goes. You it know, goes up. Yeah. Right. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think you're right. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense. I'm just kind of thinking about, you know, the people that I know who I played with or know. Yeah, well. Maybe not, though. Maybe you had the exception. I mean. Were you the crime uh, Maybe I was the crime one. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's not hitting close to home as much as I thought. Maybe, like, everyone yeah. I met seemed kind of nice, but they were, you know. Maybe it was me. Maybe it was just me. Maybe I missed that boat. How fun would it be to have a studio here where we could shoot videos and... It'd be nice. I mean, I'm going to say right now, in about two weeks, I'll be homeless, so I have no choice. <laughs> What's that? What's the deal with your apartment situation? Apartment situation, okay, quick update. Uh, I don't have one still. <laughs> so still haven't. Um, still haven't really looked. Um, don't... Yeah, so that's basically where we're at. Now, I'm always kind of the been the the last minute guy. You know, I always kind of wait to the last minute when it comes to housing. So something will probably, you know, come up or some, some apartment will fall through for another person and I can get in there. And uh, we'll see. I mean, if I don't have a place, any followers, please reach out to me. I can stay with you for like a month. It's truly fascinating. Like three weeks. The things that you take a casual approach to. All right. Well, I feel like you're going to give me a lecture. <laughs> so I kind of, the tone was there. All right, go ahead. What uh, you got? My apartment situation. I don't have an apartment. Haven't looked. <laughs> just, I know some of my friends are like, they're just, they're just, um, I can see you a lot also of my friends. To- some of my friends are, uh, they get, I feel like they get a little annoyed by either they're annoyed or they don't understand my, uh, I don't know. I guess my just don't worry. I don't get worried about things like that. And I think I know I I have my own theory as to why I don't worry about things like that. But I don't know if the people who are questioning that would understand it. It's very interesting. Where do you want to live? I mean, I would love to live at like anything that has I, you know what it is? I own, I want to live in an apartment where that has a stand-up shower uh-huh. and a washer and dryer. Those are the only two things that I really would like to have this this go around. Stand-up shower should be easy. Washer and dryer is going to be tough. Washer and dryer in unit? Well, you wouldn't be my... It, you yeah. would not... I would never hire you as my agent with, <laughs> with that attitude. Wow. Whatever happens to... Jesus like, I'm looking to pay $200 a month cash... I'm going to need parking, a pool, and if you can find in-unit washer and dryer. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to push it. No. Get on it. (laughs) Get on it. Chase the showings at three. I'll be there at four. Okay. Traffic. You make make the situations um, accommodate to your reality. Which I think is important. You I, make certain situations have to accommodate to your reality. Mm. Re- I want to say reality because I would like to st- still feel like I live in like the same reality as people. I think you do, but I do think there's... I would say comfort. Yeah. Yeah, I would say it has to, it has to meet my... My comfort of pe- like when it comes to like my peace. My mental peace. Mm-hmm. Because I don't let things like, if I feel like something's gonna like upset or move my like my peace of mind, then yeah, then I won't do it. Mm. Okay, interesting. <laughs> yeah. So it's gotta fall. Anything that I do, it has to. I have to be comfortable with like physically and like mentally and emotionally. So it's, I call it the triangle effect. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> what do you text Winters? I mean, I know Tex Winters, the, the, and he's dead. The triangle offense? Yeah. 
I always revert back to like emotional quotes by the Triangle Offense by the Chicago Bulls. 95-96. Did you 96. just watch The Last Dance? Yeah. I, I've adopted a triangle-like mentality. Well, so you, so you, okay. And then you're most likely going to what? Go on one of these sites to find a place or have you, how'd you get your last place? Was it a referral? It was just actually on Facebook. So I oh. saw on Facebook when my, you know, uh, it was actually a fellow comic who put a ad, I mean, a uh, listing. I was like, oh, I know this comic for a lot of years. We're not like, like best of friends, but I do know him through the circuit. He's always been cool with me. So I reached out to him, visited the place. It was up the street from my old place, which I liked. I, liked, I wanted to stay in the same area. It worked out. And in my previous place, I stayed for seven years, so I didn't have to move. Mm -hmm. That place was the shit. You've been into that place before. Um, my old place prior to the new place that you came. No? no. But you did. No. Okay, maybe not. Well, I didn't like you back then. Then. Well, I sent you a nice uh, uh, thank you gift after coming on my podcast because I thought that's what you did. Yeah, you were dope. That was awesome. That was a great <laughs> gift, by the way. And I used every single one of them. I was sending people thank you gifts. Yeah. Fucking open my comic. Not well, you, but. Well, no, that was a good. Well, that got me like that buttered my biscuit. Pause. I mean, that's how I always am and always. Uh, that's yeah. how I'm always going to be. Yeah, you're just a genuine thoughtful. Touch. Well, you're thoughtful. Yeah. So. You know, I look at those qualities and, you know, certain people. Are they thoughtful? Are they, you know, do they think about things? Yeah, whether or not, like, you sent me a gift or not is irrelevant. It was more of the thoughtful, the thought that count. Um, it was a good podcast, too, which I never really, like, did any of like, anyone's podcast who just started. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because I didn't, you got to know people, you know, stuff. But yeah. for some reason, yeah, I felt like you were cool. And now we have a weekly date. <laughs> Every yeah. week uh, to do. <laughs> so I don't know if it was intentional or I'm starting to think, oh, you're trying to do something here, Nikki, and, Nikki. And, and, then I, and then you get, and then we have a weekly thing where I come and greet you at the door and you pick my outfit apart. I do. I do. Which is hard because your outfits are pretty linear in terms of with the color. Yeah. So it's black, black, black. Mostly black. Actively black. Everything. Shout out to actively black <laughs> <Everything>. sportswear. <laughs> We got to reach out to them. I think you'd be a great spokesperson. Where, uh, yeah, I think so too. Yeah, I mean, they wouldn't put you on like they wouldn't take pictures of you. You'd be like a spokesperson behind the scenes. I would be like the guy that hosts the events. No, no, no not host. No, you want you gotta be directing the events. Yeah, because you you wouldn't understand the vision. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but you don't talk much. You know, they'd be like, okay, this is what Passad wants. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't go by Nikki. You'd go Passad. Yeah, it would be something different. Yeah. I think people would react better to that. Yeah, because, you know, Nikki Neighborhoods. Yeah, they're like, who's this Sicilian-looking, whatever he is, Greek. Yeah. I get Greek a lot. <laughs> so what neighborhood do you want to live in? I kind of want to live in the same area that I live now, just because I'm used to it. It's still close to Boston. Well, I live in Boston. I mean, I could get by Uber to you with, like, no traffic, 10 minutes. 10 minutes, 12, yeah. 12 minutes, if that. So, Easy. yeah, I want to stay in the same area. If not... Shit, if I had a little bit of coin, I, you know, hey, I mean, you're unemployed. I mean, you got an extra room. I could help. <laughs> hey, I'm just trying to help. Don't be looking at me as if. You I know. would have, I would be quickly divorced if I <laughs> accepted a roommates. roommate without my wife's <laughs> consent. It's roommates. Yeah, by the way, we have a roommate now. <laughs> oh, okay. Is he, is he split? No, he's not splitting the rent evenly. That's not, he's providing me with spots on <laughs> local shows. Except. Good practice. I'd get to. I'd get to. I'd get to practice. Let's practice right now. I'm going to Bebop tonight. Is that still an open Let's mic? Let's go. Yeah, it, it is. is. Yeah, I'll shoot a text. No. Yeah. No. Well. Well, I mean, do you want to practice with me now? Can we? I mean, if that bits. Bit, no, no. I don't want to listen to your bits. Ugh. You know that. <laughs> Ugh. Ugh. Don't ever say that again on this podcast. Bits. Don't ever say bits again. <laughs> You want me to do my comedy skits? Yeah. And I'd be like, no. Fuck out of here. New producer next week. <laughs> new, new producer next week. <laughs> Scotty Streets is replacing Nikki Neighborhoods on the Guts of the Chase podcast. Um, no, I was going to say we can actually do like a role play of if I'd be like, I'd be your wife and you would try to come to me with asking her if like your friend's going to be moving in. I couldn't even imagine it. Okay, I don't know your wife that well. I know her enough, though, mm -hmm. to say that 
this would probably would happen. You would come up to her and you would say, by the way, because that's what you, you do that. By the way. You know you do that. Do I say by the way? You do say by the way. You'd be like, I like that. Yeah. You would say, by the way, like you, you would make like her a that. really nice dinner first though. Mm-hmm. You know? You know this. Yep. Yep. But it'd be a quick dinner. It yep. wouldn't be a long dinner because you know, you, you don't want to be still eating when she says no to you. Yeah. You want to make a quick enough. <laughs> don't want to ruin the meal. You, don't, you definitely want to hang around after someone says no to you. That's the worst feeling, right? Yeah. Especially if you feel like you ever go on a date. I mean, when you go on a date. Have you ever been on, like, a, before you got married, you've been on dates where the date is just sucks, but you know you're spending so much money in the meal, you still want to eat the food? <laughs> or is that just me? No. I never went on those kind of dates, but I know what you're... I, I... Right, show off. Okay. <laughs> Fuck you. Ugh, this guy's two strikes, dude. One more fucking Nikki. I swear to God, next week someone's coming. <laughs> You're gonna have uh, what's it? What's the, what would be the guy's name? Who would be your replacement? Somebody nice. <laughs> someone who someone that doesn't say bits. Someone doesn't say bits and looks at me with fucking disdain when Contempt. I make an idea. Contempt. <laughs> so um, yeah, you would make like you know some quick food, and you would. You would eat, you would talk to her, and you would say, oh, by the way, honey, you know, you're leading in with, like, you're leading with a tone as if you didn't have this plan, but you definitely had this plan the whole time. Mm-hmm. You say, oh, by the way, honey, um, you, know Ch- you know Chase. You know, you always say, like, you know Chase. Mm-hmm. As if, like, it's, she's, now it's just Val- validating, validating, it. you know, the connection. You know Chase, and and from her response, that's going to dictate your next response. Because if she goes, oh, I, yeah, Chase. I, oh, I love Chase. Yeah, mm-hmm. how's he doing? Yeah. Boom. You, in your mind, you're like, I got her. But if she's like, yeah, I don't, yeah, what's up? That's always that. And then you're like. You think I hold things back from, like, from, from <laughs> at a conversational standpoint? My wife communicates like she's a C, the CEO of General Electric. Like, she <clears throat> does not. Mm-hmm. Her savviness and her emotional um, just ability to dominate someone mentally, she'd, she'd go, mm-hmm. I'd go, oh, you know Chase, right? <laughs> we do the podcast, great guy, friend of mine, friend of the show. She'd go, mm-hmm. Mm. <sighs> okay, well, um, he's going to be moving in with us. Hold on one minute. Where did you come up with this idea? And that's when the mental t- torture would, she would just start throwing darts. See, this is where you would be fired again as my agent. Because that was the worst pitch for me to come live with you being homeless. I would never trust you with that pitch. What the fuck was that? That was so bad. You can't lead in Nikki with being like, you know Chase. Yeah, he's moving in. You have to say, you know Chase. Well... But here's He's been thing. going through a rough patch. I couldn't she's say made- it with a straight face, though. That's the thing would be tough is when she's like, well, has he looked for apartments? Well, no, technically he hasn't. <laughs> That's true. Did, did, did he put in any effort to help out his own situation? Um, we did a podcast about it. Does that, does that fucking help? No, he's out. This is what I tell you. This is what I. This is when I tell you, Nick, that you have to make me as shitty as a person, like of my behavior, so she would feel sorry for me to give me a chance. But that's the thing; she doesn't feel. She doesn't feel. And sorry. This is why I love her. No. <laughs> she's just, she's like, she doesn't have any pity on any adult who could help themselves, but doesn't. I love it. I mean, if it, Actually, I mean, I love obviously, it. if it's a situation where someone needs something and it's a dire situation, that would be a different story. But yeah, no, no, she didn't feel sorry for me about my credit card debt. She didn't feel sorry about any of that. She's like, you need to fix it. Well, be listen, a man and fix it. Well, don't fucking put me in your situations because I'm separate. All right. I'm just letting you know that if you were to move into this house, you would be in the same situation. I would only come in at eight o'clock at night. Maybe it'd be good for you. Maybe, maybe moving in here under my wife's, under, yeah, and, we're, we're me back into shape. It would, it, would, it would put you. Well, yeah. I mean, at least yeah. you know something with something. You'd be accepting calendar invites for sure. <laughs> I wouldn't be late to the podcast. You'd be late to the podcast. 
Uh, let's see. What else? Yeah, I'm a great cleaner. I clean really You're good. Great cleaner. Yep. You take you take your you do take your shoes off. You see, you, um, you notice that. Yeah, yeah. I'm a good. I'm. I don't smell bad. You don't smell bad. You are sensitive to temperature, light, uh, and smell. So I think that you have to be to live in this apartment. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. I'm not loud. No, you're really not. Mm. Yeah. All right. Maybe you're talking me into it. Okay. All right. I mean, if you, if you want to trade, I'm. <laughs> <laughs> wife's wife spot. Wife spot. What is it? Wife switch. Was that show? Wife swap. <laughs> wife switch. I don't, I don't think know. you would last a minute. That oh. little thing that you said about your peace, <laughs> your your peace of mind, your comfortability. Guess right. what? That goes out the window. My wife's throwing a fucking grenade at it. <laughs> Uh, it's always. Um, I love being married, though. It's great. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna lead into that after we we uh, talked about your lovely wife. Mm-hmm. How's it going? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how to ask a married man how's marriage life going, but I would say how. I mean, that's like a single guy's way of asking, yeah. like how's it yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel me? That's a good way of asking. Uh, yeah, it's it's going great. I don't fucking buy the whole like people get married after knowing each other for we my wife and I have been together for I think we're going on seven years. So like that's a good that's a good amount of time to get married. It's these people that are getting married after their first year where you have to start asking like Oof, yeah. or, or second year, even third year. Even being with someone for three years and then getting married, that's insane to me. I think I think three years is probably the is what I will probably understand at the very least right yeah also i think it's age comes into it too i have to factor in age experience to to have met to marry me you need to uh have gone through what my wife has gone through which is um trauma two (laughs) sorry (laughs) two funerals um a, a, a mental breakdown someone in your family or a family adjacent having a mental breakdown working through that with you uh and you know just a whole other slew of things before we can even get around to talking about marriage thank you you need to be battle tested listen thank you very much because i've been trying to find certain ways to explain that to people (laughs) because they always ask me do you want to get married what type of woman do you want to marry is marriage in your future and i just say wait 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 let me try to explain to you, you know, what type of person that I feel like will need to be to understand a type of person that I am. And usually I can't explain it because my vocabulary sucks and I can't find the words to say it. But I usually just say the most easiest way that I say it is she's got to be special. Well, yeah, <laughs> she's got to be fucking special to deal with a dude like me, a type of dude like me. And I'm not saying I'm like Denzel Washington or anything like that because clearly pff, I'm better. Oh God! Don't you? <sighs> don't that's you're <laughs> over two. You're over two. Watch. You see me looking at I the soundboard. I saw it. I I looked at you as soon as I said Denzel. You wanted to say something. I said, "Hey, this podcast has been going good. All right, don't ruin it." But. Yeah, so I just say I just say that well, to people. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Right? Yeah. I just you know I feel like I think when I, someone's like, "Do you?" And if it's a woman or whatever you're into, and they're like, "Do you, <laughs> you want to get married?" You like you're like, "Yeah, but why do you want to get married?" I think people like to just say the word. You know, I think people like the the thought of mm. having a thing and a party and a and a piece of paper and all that other shit. I want to know, do you want to correct my lifestyle choices for three or four years before we can really, you know, get into the good part about the relationship? Because if you don't, it's probably not going to work out. That's the thing. It's like everyone's like, I want to I want someone who is just like me or likes the same things as me or, 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 you know, fits into my like puzzle. And, like, part of that, is they should. It shouldn't be a, a constant, like, abrasive relationship. But, like, you can't not. It's not, it's not real. You need to. My wife and I, like, yeah. not without sharing too much <clears throat> info, fought 
constantly for like and, and when I say fought it was like why are you coming home drunk every night or why are you why are you doing this or why are you acting this way why are you being so financially irresponsible or this or that or whatever why are you doing these things and we would get in arguments about that because it was wrong and then like you know fourth year fifth year we're like oh okay we figured everything out we've set the table so now we can kind of take life as it comes. Mm. That was just for me. That's not for everyone, you know? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> how I understand it to be based on what you, how you it just explained your situation. I read it as, no, she always was, she always was good. You, she just waited for you to get yes. your shit together. She was proactive though. That's the yeah. thing. You'll not, it's so rare to find someone that will do that where she was literally just like, no, well, no, this is what you're going to do and yeah. you're going to fix it. Cause I'd be like. I'd be like, you should just leave me. I'm, I'm a piece of shit. I'm never going to figure this out. And she's like, no, no, you're going to figure it out. It's going to happen. And this is how you're going to do it. Well, that's a sign of a good woman. That's a sign of, I believe, someone who sticks by you when you really are, when, she, when they know you're not like at your best. Yeah. But they work with you to, to elevate you, to get you better. Um, but, I mean, who really in their right mind is going to wait for a person to get it together? Someone Only who's one person, in my opinion. <laughs> what, was that? what was that? Someone who's 23 years old and has time. In time. Yeah. Exactly. It has to be someone who cares about you. There's got to be someone who yeah. really loves you. I, I, I don't know anyone else that would wait so long for a person to like get their shit together. I mean, some people don't have to get married, but if you're feeling like you want to be with someone, get fucking married. Everyone's like, uh, that's my thing with kids. That's the step where I'm at with, with my life right now is like, oh, God. I'm looking forward to kids like, you know, people like look forward to gentrification of neighborhoods where it's like, I like things the way they are now. <laughs> okay. right. Let's let's keep the neighborhood like it is now for a little bit with right. the yeah. with the good restaurant before the fucking chains move in and right. everything becomes, you know, yeah. Disneyland. Yeah. I kind of like this now. So, well, <clears throat> you know. Well, if you, yeah, I mean, listen. I'm sure I will get married to whom? To what? I don't know. <laughs> it's twenty twenty two. You can marry that lamp if I, you want. To. If I, want, if I yeah. feel that if it's a lamp, It'd be a great wedding. It's a little skinny. Needs a <laughs> lamp's a little skinny for me, but she needs to get a little. She needs to beef up a little. Needs to beef up a little, but good potential. Yeah, good potential. However, you can't. I feel that. Ugh, this is the thing I heard, and I kind of made sense to me. I said you. People who, people who are out there in relationships, if you're one of these people that falls on this idea that I love them because they have potential, don't fall in love with potential. Fall in love with the fact that they have potential, but they're also showing you actions along the way that they are getting. Yeah, like, sure. Little. It has to be like a bolt. It, it can't just be all about like potential, you mm -hmm. know? It, it's got to also have the it's actions also has to be the backpack with potential. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Like a little bit. Now, some people will get it like quicker. They'll show actions quicker. Some people take time, but they got to show you at least that they're working on their behaviors. Um, so you can be together ultimately uh -huh. in a healthy way because there's people that are just with people, but they're not healthy for each other. Mm -hmm. They don't elevate each other in any way. Sure. They're just with each other. They just, with each other, they argue all the time. It's like a what's it called? That type of bond, trauma bond, relationship An arrangement. It's like a yeah, like people who two people who are just together because they only are yeah. connected by the traumas. They're that they, codependent. They codependent. You know all that mm -hmm. shit. I don't want that. That's bizarre. I don't want it. It's sad. It's sad to look at, and you can see it from far away. I know people like this. I got people in my family that are like this. Well, because then they get then there's this weird thing with with diet and weight gain that I see with people that are like, okay, just going to settle into this. We're going to go. We're going to do the dive bar every Tuesday. I'm going to ignore her. We're going to sit there. I'm going to be on my phone doing fantasy football. Yep. She's, <laughs> you know, he's talking to some dudes, you know, like he just met there darting and yep. playing, like watching the sports game. She's talking to a black dude. She's, she's got trauma. She's sorry. just happy that he's there. Yeah. <laughs> To protect yeah. her. Yeah. It's some like, you know, place yeah. in the suburbs, you know. Yeah. Black dude walks in. Chili's. She, yep. Yeah. She's talking to the black dude. She's like, hey, you know, 
You, you know, she's making. Listen, I've been in those situations before. <laughs> I, just, I just caught that. You just, <laughs> Because we were both picturing yep. a fat white couple. Yep. <laughs> and you were like, yep. oh. Yep. In like Wakefield. And yeah. Or like Linfield. Bridgewater. Bridgewater. <laughs> you know. <laughs> there are these. Shout out to Plymouth. <laughs> but this is a thing. Like, yeah, I've been in those situations where I walked into like bars and shit and I'm just chilling and there's this couple that are I, I don't know I don't know how they are together or or even like why they're together but they're yeah. doing their own thing they're not even paying attention to each other mm-hmm. guys doing his thing with the guys she's like talking to a dude at the bar she ends up like flirting with them and like mm-hmm. you know all this shit you know dude I've gotten girls numbers like women like who are like just with their guys they just willingly just be like here's my number call oh, me like just miserable. and I'm just like you you are doing this and I'm like and you're married to me I would it's so bizarre. God forbid. Like, what? It's so bizarre. And you oh, know. Maybe they have this poly thing going on. Who knows? But I can't be in those type of relationships. You I'm know, not, it's not my thing. But hey, anyone who's listening to my podcast, I'm all for it. Just keep subscribing. There's a name for everything. It's, it's insane. <laughs> it's not insane. You could be whatever you want. But I sure. just. What bugs me is this like, oh, yeah, you're a this. It's like, no, I just like to get this every once in a while. Everyone fucking had. There's a name and a. And a designation for everything it's like yeah you just like to fuck a lot of people it's okay yeah it's just like a just really do that it's a name that a label that they just created to you know what it is like being poly is being the you know louis vuitton of like single people it's just like wow, it's, it's a fancy sense. way of like it's a fancy way of putting a label oh, yeah. on something that doesn't really need to have a label for mm-hmm. you know but Shout out to Louis Vuitton for our sponsors podcast. Email, you know, C2C podcast at gmail.com. We don't charge that much. Um, Nikki might, though. I don't know, man. I think people hurt themselves by attaching identity to labels. That does. Yeah. You know what? We're going two backs on the two strikes that you had. Now you're clean. I think people hurt themselves by attaching identity to labels. Yeah, labels. Just, okay, just Me. whatever. Label horse. I'm trying to lose weight, so I'm not, I'm trying not to eat red meat. Oh, you're a pescatarian. No, I'm, j- I'm just trying not to die, man. Okay, give me a fuck, I don't. There was this girl at my job the other day, she's like, I need to lose eight pounds, and I threw up. Wait, she said she needs to lose eight yeah, pounds, she so, she, she, so she threw up? I threw up. Oh, <laughs> I said, what kind, first of all, what type of number is that? Do you realize? Do like, you realize you know, you how just, eight pounds is thirty days of discipline? You could lose eight pounds in thirty days if you were disciplined. Yeah, I threw up, and I just was like, "What? What are you talking about?" And then I threw up again when she told me how she's going to lose weight. I said, "How are you going to lose weight?" She goes, "I started taking pole dancing." She will lose weight though. That's not easy. <sighs> this is the thing. I don't. I don't think she's. Doing pole dancing because she wants to lose weight. I think I don't she's like using white pole trash dancing. activities as exercise. I don't think now. she's using pole dance to lose weight. I think she wants to fucking pole dance because she wants to like do that, and she wants to you know, and if you whatever like the whole thing you know those people that use something as an excuse yeah. to validate what they're doing. Yeah, it's just like how about just saying yo I want to pole dance yo I started taking pole dance and I'd be like yo that's dope. Why you feel so insecure that it's like. She's like, oh, because I, didn't, I don't like to, you know, I, didn't, I tried other things. So I just, I just tried pole dancing and I want to lose eight pounds. I'm like, no, you just want to, <laughs> you just like to want to pole dance because you want to get a little freak in the sheets maybe. Or you want to live a little. How about just doing that and just saying, because she wasn't even talking about the weight loss. More. She was talking more about the pole dancing. It's like you're way more interested at dropping like it's hot from fucking 20 feet above. That's so bizarre. <laughs> just like, just, just own it. Okay, and actually, tell me where you pole dancing. I'll support you. Like <laughs> you're, f- <laughs> I'll support pole dancing. You know, I don't like. I've been to some strip clubs, and these women who pole dance are athletes because they go. I've seen them go like thirty feet in the air and just go so fast, and they stop like a couple inches right before their head hits the ground. And I'm like, so you have that disciplined. Of stripping and going down the pole that fast. How come? I don't know. 
I, I don't, I don't just. Okay, go do pole dancing. Go do whatever. pole dancing. That's all I'm saying. Go have fun. <laughs> Go just fall out. Maybe, maybe don't eat. Maybe just don't, don't eat, eat a certain just, way. Just don't eat a certain way. That the, you know, it's. It, I'm. A, I'm tired of it all. Everything's out there. Everything's fucking out there. What do you want to know? If you, unless you're a fighter, don't tell me you're gonna lose eight pounds. You want to lose seven pounds? Like I don't want to hear that. Lo- but here's the thing. There's. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. Matter. Your eight pounds doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can take a shit right now. You lose eight pounds. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Your eight pounds does not matter. Go and go and feel good about something. Just go pole dance to pole dance. Drink that. water so you don't die. Yes. Eat a vegetable. Shout out to Avion and Fiji. I had to. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, how was your... Uh, I saw that you went somewhere again. Where'd you go? You went to New York? Or was, did you went to New York recently? Or was it Philly or something? A couple weeks ago? I did, um, I did Philly a couple weeks ago, and then I went to New York l- two weeks. I think last weekend, maybe. Yeah, yeah last yeah, yeah. weekend I was in New York. What was he doing in New York? What the heck are you were doing there? I was in Williamsburg. All right, shout out to what Williamsburg. A, what, a, what a place, huh? All right, I could see it. You're getting comfortable. You're looking at it. You're looking at the, you know, your eyes are changing. A neighborhood that you probably would live in. I could see. It's a, it's like a weird. It's a weird, horny energy in Williamsburg wow. that's driven by dog and ch- child culture. Okay. Like, everyone's got a dog that's got a personality. Everyone has a child that's got a personality in Williamsburg. They can't just have them. They have to be like, here's my kid. He's a rock star. Here's my dog. She's sassy. And they all stop each other on the street to talk about those things. Mm. That's what I observe there. Okay. Um. A lot of... So you just went to New York to observe kids and dogs in Williamsburg? I don't understand. Like, where are we doing? Are we oh, doing? I went to go visit friends. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, that's just what I observed. I have my little notes here on Williamsburg. Oh. Because I'm very observant. Um, dude, New York City's great. I just... It, it, Brooklyn, though. Brooklyn's great. Brooklyn's great. Everyone Brooklyn. shits on Brooklyn. Like, it is mm-hmm. what it is. It, you know, Williamsburg Brooklyn. is hyper-gentrified. But you go a couple blocks down and it's not. And gentrified in New York is way different than gentrified in Boston. Yeah. Gentrified in New York is like, oh, you could still get some cultural influence that is not mm-hmm. white. Mm. <laughs> There's, you could still go to some pretty great Mexican restaurants. You can still go to oh, yeah. some locally, like bodegas. Or, like, it's right there. It's all there. There's just a couple more chain restaurants than there normally were, you know? And obviously. Yeah. I feel like that's like more us. Like more like it's got to, we got to have a mixture of everything. I like to live in a place where it's like a mixture of everything. I have to. You know, yeah. I just, I kind of demand that actually. But who knows? Maybe like if I get a little older, you know, get out the city, you know, whatever. But even if I lived in like in a suburb that was like, I, it has to have some sense of diversity for me because I want good food Mm -hmm. all the time I want options of good food all the time different types of food Mm -hmm. growing up in the east coast we get privileged to that want you know want Lebanese food of course right here go here I want Afghanistan food yeah right here Ethiopian food yep right over here Chinese food everywhere (laughs) it's It's wild it's wild it's wild Italian food yeah boom 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 you know you gone out to eat lately? I went to the Phoenician back again. Oh, you did? I took my, nice. took my uh, shout out to Professor Howard, Doomsday Howard, my jiu-jitsu coach. Uh, I took him, uh, my friend John uh, as well. Snyder, shout out to Snyder. Fucking Snyder. Um, but yeah, I took him to the Phoenician restaurant. Yeah, man, they loved everything. Yeah. I told him, I was like, guys, this is a place where everything's it's good. good. And... They, they, they liked it a lot. They, they liked it a lot. I love going. Shout out to, to Polly. Shout out to George the Greek. I Shout don't know how these people are. These real people. They, these are the yeah the yeah the owners. Oh, <laughs> that's another thing too. I feel like a lot of to- a lot of the times in Boston, it's like great Italian restaurant. Shout out to the owners, George the Greek, Mike the Armenian, and nobody <laughs> was Italian. <laughs> and the food was delicious. Bomb. Yeah. Bomb. Yeah. Yeah, Paul, Paulie's Italian. Paulie's Italian. Um, oh, Puerto Rican. Depends on how you want to. I mean, John Leguizamo played an Italian yeah. dude, so don't don't shoot the messenger, okay? 
So you go there. What do you get when you go? Oh, I mean, they rolled out this great. We, we were the first ones actually to try the, a new menu. I believe on Sundays, I think they're rolling out where it's a, it's a pack. It's like a, it's like a family pack. It's like a pack where it's like, you get like two appetizers. You get, well, no, you get like a certain amount of appetizers, certain amount of, um, uh, you get, uh, you get, so you get, think you get an entree, certain amount of appetizers, certain amount of entrees, certain amount of dessert. So each thing you get like four things. Oh, it's like a tasting menu. Sort it's of. like you just, you just, you know, and then they rolled out. So it's, it was like $35 per each person, but you get all these things, Uh huh. you know, cause nice. Uh, so we, he rolled it out, man, we went to town. He made, shout out to Pauly the chef. Oh, Pauly, listen. He made a smoked maple syrup bacon, bacon strips, or ba- like bacon strips, like maple, like a maple, maple, maple bacon strips. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't even say it. It was so good. Yeah, yeah. You were struggling. With- <laughs> Jesus. You talk like you fucking had one in your mouth. Yeah, I was, I was looking the fuck. I was about to eat this Wait, microphone. Wait, so you got, you got, you got, okay. No, so he just made ahead. it as a, just like a nice oh, oh, treat. Oh, oh, oh. Here you like go. He just yeah. made, hey, hey, like, this is what Italian restaurants do. This is when you know it's a true Italian restaurant. When the chef comes out. And he makes sure that you're eating and you're eating good. And what else besides the bacon, though? That does not strike me as an Italian. No, I just like there was a oh. woman that was with us. Like my friend's <laughs> girlfriend loved bacon. We were just talking about bacon. He was like, oh, I'm going to make I got something for you. He went, made his bacon. Yeah. Oh, it was. What else did you get? What else was the. Oh, so the thing is, I got. Um, we got uh, mozzarella. You know, okay. he, he makes a palm mozzarella yeah. palm. Yeah. yeah, we got mozzarella palm. Fried. Ca- we got calamari, of course. Mm-hmm. Had to go some calamari. Um, we got meatballs. Mm-hmm. You know, they have their own classic. Meatballs. Um, I mean, if you pull up the menu, I can definitely tell you like oh, what we got. I'm, I'm, yeah, it was. Uh, you we, don't remember? You don't remember off yet? Yeah, it I, was like two. It was like a week and a half ago. Oh, yeah, I had yeah. a lot of food since then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, fucking this guy. You know what? Back to fucking strike one. I remember right? every we even, and now we're back to strike one. Two more, Nick. I swear to God, by this end of this podcast, I swear to God, I'll be like Trump. You're fired. You're out. Boom, you're fired. Um, as a guy that I used to work with used to go, boom, fired. Um, okay. A little sass to him. Yeah. A little sass to him. <laughs> when are you going back to New York? I'd like to go back soon. I would like to book some shows there, you know, because yeah. I want to go start. Like, if I go to New York, I want to do set. I want to do spots now. Mm-hmm. You know, I used to go to New York and like do a spot here and there, but. Network and hang. Now I want to make sure, like, I want to get set some sets up there. Mm-hmm. So next month, I start booking shows for September. Well, that's fine. Um, and then this fall is going to be interesting. I'm going to step it up, you know, get back on stage more. I'm um, going to hit a mic after this, hopefully. Depends on what time we get out of here. And just trying to get back to the basics and basic uh, um, principles of stand up and do this more on a consistent basis. Had my break, had my fun. Now it's time to put this whole thing together and hopefully create this half hour by end of next year so I can film it myself, mm-hmm. release it on YouTube and hire like a production company to do it. So that's fun. Yeah. How's the um, TikTok going? I just started fucking tick. I just started it. I mean, yeah. I just I posted two things. Isn't that great? I mean, I haven't even had time to like navigate it, but there's so much shit on TikTok. I don't even know where to begin. Yeah. And, like there was one, I just like something just came out where a woman just like laid on her back. She was going to bench press She and she faked it and she left and it had like 30,000 views. I said, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and number one, if it's, if it's that easy to get views, then I'm going to kill it. Yes. Yeah. I'm just going to put stuff of me eating peanut butter and jelly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know TikTok is like, but I also heard that TikTok is actually kind of dangerous. Like it's it's an app that like they really it's not good. They they take your um, data and shit. It's not good. Yeah. So China, I read an article in the Economist about this. So China has it's actually right there. Um, it's a it's a Chinese company. They own the data. Not only do they own right. the data. Nope. Stopping it right now. I am deactivating that shit right now as you speak. Hey. Nope. Fuck what that. TikTok does is, in the terms of conditions, everyone's like, oh, they own my, our data. But, like, the data, I, and I said that as well, uh, and then I read about what it actually means. Th- these companies can go into your phone when you give them access 
and they can not only access your microphone, they can access your keystrokes, which means they know exactly what you're typing when you're typing it. And any sort of um, like facial recognition, things like that. Some companies do that, some don't. But I mean, they literally have access to everything you're doing. And then they're selling that to companies to sell you things and God knows what else. So the U.S. is, is saying, you know, why don't we house the data here? We'll have like a company like Oracle house the data here and we hold it here. And, the, and China's like, yeah, no, we're going to take that. So go follow Chase on TikTok. Yeah. I only have one, one post. I probably will only have one post because I'm never going to use this fucking thing ever again. No. Um, but we'll see. I don't know. There's no privacy anymore. That's why I've also feel. That's Listen, man, I came to, to that realization. Yeah. There's no like. There's no more privacy anymore. Like if they want to know who I am or where I live, it's like at this point, it's like you can just probably put it in Google or something. I don't know. It's just scary. They're trying to blow up, dude. You need to just do whatever you got to do at this point. It's like, all right. You can well, figure it out later. You know what? You just went back down to even slate. Strike just went out the window. You're right back down as even. You're back on my team. It's fun not having a job. You can say what you want. You're, well, you're kind of you're kind of you no, fuck you it can't. up a little bit. You, you can't you can't say what you want ever. <laughs> you can never say what you want. Nicky just got back his job. There we go. Um, yeah, for those who are listening, I've, I've been laid off from my my corporate day job, Oof. which is not fun. I never see the thing is that's. So they, what they do? They like just they just hit you up. Did you have to go in? And they tell you? No, no, no. Everything's everything's done online. So it it you know it. Online. I can't really because I, I signed an NDA NDA, but um, it's not great. Oh, it's not a great first of feeling. All, for, what, what the what did you what did you just say? You signed a what? An NDA, non disclosure agreement. So you, you signed a non disclosure agreement for your job. Yeah, it's, that's everyone who, does that. Who? First of all, not everyone does that, number one. Because I got fired at Valvoline. They didn't give a fuck who I told. You're fucking privileged. Yeah, everyone has that. They didn't say shit. They were like, no, you I got fired from Valvoline. What do they think? You were going to go over to Firestone and share the secrets? Yeah. Take the IP from Valvoline and go over to Firestone? (laughs) Maybe. Fuck the whole game up? Maybe. Maybe. You never know. So, yeah, so that's why it's like when you said NDA, I was like, wait, is he trying to like, what the fuck is he like? I was like, I've never had a job where they had to sign something. They say, don't don't say anything about us. Finance, I guess that's healthcare, tech, those those industries, you have to sign an NDA so that I can't then go to another finance place or or a tech company or a healthcare place and go, hey, this is exactly what they're doing over here. Look at all these documents. I would never do that to begin with, but they can take legal action. Yeah, I don't think I don't think black people we, we don't we don't we don't, we like if we you know if we get fired from a place we're like we're fucking we're, everyone we're, knows everybody knows <laughs> <laughs> Facebook fucking what was that as Steve we're Harvey leaving, bit? as we're leaving we're telling the security guard go you know everything Willie Willie Green <laughs> Willie we gotta let you go Yep. the fuck you are through the desk a great bit telling everything yep. God it was a we're, classic Steve Harvey bit yeah yeah until we get the new job. And that's when everything we forget about the old job. Right under the rug. Yeah. 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 Because then, if we're getting a new job, would say would talk so highly of the previous the previous job. Yeah. In order to get the new job. Yeah. So. Well, it is what it is. Right. I don't, I don't, you know. Well, I mean, you saw a non disclosure agreements. I mean, you're obviously valuable to to to, to someone. So Nikki Neighborhoods podcast coming out. All right. We're getting back in the open mic circuit. How fast can you collect like unemployment? Because like usually when I get fired, because I've been fired from a lot of jobs, Nikki. I'm not proud of it, but um, some, you know, we could. It's a little questionable, but some companies do severance. See, so some companies. I, don't get, I never got see. That's well, when you're at a company long enough, so if say you've been at a company, this is not, this, none of this applies to me. None of this has anything to do with me or my situation. I never graduated, Nikki. So I never had a but, job, like a real job. So stop. Like. So so at a re- so at a job. So at a real job. Um, I worked at Valvoline. Yeah. So at a real job, you've been with a company, say for um, you know four years, five years. For every year after, I think some companies do for every year you've been with the company, and some companies do for every like year after three years. Um, you get a certain amount of weeks paid 
if they were to lay you off. So that if they were to lay you off, they would pay you up until a certain point and then your severance would kick in. So you'd get like another month of paychecks coming in until you find a new job. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't, didn't reach that level okay. in the, in the unemployment world. Um, I mean, it's news to me. After severance, I've, you can then apply for unemployment. I think I, yeah, missed out on a lot of things, I guess. Yeah. I guess from any listeners, what you can take from this, that particular segment, go to college, get a degree. Cause I didn't know you can have a, I don't know. This is interesting. You'll, you'll find a job. You'll get a job. You just need to know, you just need to know what, what industry you're in and what the, what the, the, you know, guidelines are. Yeah. There. I didn't do, I never yeah, did. Well, yeah. You know, I just kind of was like, Hey, potatoes, tomatoes, 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 you know, you guys are going to fire me anyways. I'm just an employee number, whatever. Pay me. I mean, that's true. That is true. I can, I can say that, yeah. uh, is that, did you feel like that at yesterday? Um, yeah. Did you, you feel know, like, did you I, feel like, okay, I've done like, did you feel like, you know, what you've done for the company was not recognized? In a way, or did you understand why they were doing it and it made I you feel better? Because you're a business guy, so I don't think like... Chase, you could imagine the way that I text. That's the same way I met with, with these people. With no emotion. Mm. Short. Three or four word responses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Asking a lot of questions. Sure. Uh, and that's it. And that's what you have to do. And like, look, at the end of the day, I think, um, I think if you're working in a corporate environment, it is what it is, man. Yeah. They don't care. Nah. And you can't and you can't get upset about it. That's the thing is you can't be upset. You just have to go in, do your job, and don't fuck up and, and don't piss anyone off and don't assault anyone and just you know, that's it. Just do your thing. I felt like that was that was a direct message for me. <laughs> but fine. <laughs> Could have told me off air, but that's fine. Uh, yeah. I kind of gave up. It, so yeah, by getting me getting this job, it reminded me how much I hate corporate America. Yeah, it's, it's not for some some people. It's not for them. It's just the money. I'm just, okay. I'm like the money. I like the yeah. people. Like oh, well, yeah. I like the networks. I like the, the 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 way that I like the brand. But I mean, some of the people that I just uh, the just the whole corporate structure of no of staying between lines. You can't go out of these lines. If you step out of these lines, you're not protected. You know, you have to like rub elbows with certain people so they can have a, a certain opinion about you that you'll be fine. You know, I've seen things. It's a lot of like greasing and ass kissing and, you know, lack of accountability when shit goes wrong, blaming uh -huh. on the other department. It's no one is really making changes. There's no leaders from the front. There's always leaders from the back. You know, managers expecting you to do the same level of job that they're doing, but they're getting paid more. It's like, yo, what is going you on? You just got to find what you like to do. Yeah, sorry. Maybe I need therapy. <laughs> sorry, that went a little... Um, you, not necessarily your passion either. I think people need no. to need to ease up on the self-actualization. It I just reminds me each and every moment that I have to get... I have to, like, make as much money as I can as quickly as possible so I can leave. So you just make money. Just do whatever you got to do to make money. That's the thing is, like, I'll find joy somewhere. Like, I'll, f I'll figure out where I'd find. I have no problem f naturally finding things that make me happy. Well, not without a roommate, you're not. But you got to make the money. you got to make the money to do the things that you want to do. I think yeah. it's a lie when people are like, just quit. Yeah. Okay, what are you going to do then? Some people don't have just quit energy. Yeah. They think about it, but they're like, but then when the pavement, like, like you, you are very resourceful. 90% of people out there are not as resourceful as you are. Can you add to and what resilient. that means? Like, what do you mean? Like, I'm resourceful. I think you can. You you don't get necessarily intimidated at, at the prospect of like, hey, you know what? I'm just going to be unemployed for a little bit and I'll, I'll figure it out. 100%. Some people are like, there's no way I could be. I just, I just can't. I'll take a job that I don't even like just to, you know. Yeah. To do that, so I think it's I think it's just you know you got to know who you are. Okay. And cut. And scene. I yeah I've always kind of. That was a character piece, by the way. I didn't it, lose my job. It was huge. You went back to zero now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you actually a negative one. Yeah. Scale of one to ten, how do you think this? <laughs> I think this episode went. So it was good. Yeah. It was good. You know, I felt that was great. We got some things off our chest, talked about a little shit, some stuff. 
I had a Slim Jim before. Yeah, that good. fired me up. It was yeah. good. You said you didn't. You don't eat pork or bacon. I try not to. Yeah. Okay. So you, what was what type was it? A turkey uh, Slim Jim? They're called Chomps, and they are there. Yeah, you can find them at Trader Joe's. Yes. What the fuck did you just <laughs> give me? I thought the we whole are, time we're digressing here. I thought that was the Slim Jim that you gave me. No. Cut to the Chase podcast, guys. We will come back with another week's episode. I'm here all the time. Nikki Neighborhoods. I don't know. After this podcast, we're going to see. See ya. Nikki, what you got for your... Pain in my side. Uh, and then we're releasing a first episode of uh, the Nikki Neighborhood show uh, in September. All right. Guys, follow me at Chase Abel, C-H-A-S-E-A-B-E-L on Instagram. I got TikTok now. Follow me on that. It's at Chase Abel underscore comedian. I have TikTok. Tick tock your way to me, tickety tock, talk to me, whatever that app does. I don't know. Thank you for listening. Tune in for another episode. Nice next week. Peace.